common clinical conditions in hip biomedical. The first one that would come to your mind is slipped capital femoral epiphysis, often denoted by the term SCFE. I promise you that when I introduce this term, it is going to be confused and you may think that it is tough to remember, but I promise you again that it is one of the most simplest thing to remember because the word is self-explanatory. Let us just see this word. It is slipped. Slipped means there is some slipping. Capital, of course, you know, is the head. For example, what is the capital of India? It means the headquarters of India. Similarly, capital means the head region. Femoral, of course, the term, the femur. And epiphysis, you know, is the growth plate or growing bone fusing areas. Okay. So, how do you define slipped capital femoral epiphysis? It is a most common adolescent hip disorder occurring when the femoral head displaces. Now, how it displays? Posteriorly on the femoral neck at the level of the growth plate. That is how it happens. There is a slipping, there is a displacing of the femoral head and that location of displacement or the direction of displacement is posterior in comparison to the femoral neck and where does the head displace? Head displaced at the level of growth plate. See this diagram, you know that when the bone is in adult or when, when the bone reaches an adult adulthood period, that is after skeletal maturity, the bone is fused, head, neck, shaft, etc. comes together and seen as a together one piece. But in children, as you know that, there will be growing plates in the bone and bone may not be fused together. So what happens is due to certain conditions, this femoral head, as I shown in this figure, displaces downwards. That is, it moves downwards at the physis, that is the growing plate of the bone. This is the growing plate that is shown in the figure. Its displacement is in the direction of pos posterior or in the posterior direction. So in figure, you may feel it is inferior, but the, actually it is moving posterior in comparison to the hip complex. So that is slipped femoral capital epiphysis. Okay, and what are the reasons for that? Coxavara and high BMI is the reason. As I told you, Coxavara in the previous class is one of the most common reason that can result in slipped capital femoral epiphysis. And high BMI is another reason. And the incidence is usually seen in teens and preteens. I would like to call it as adolescent period, of course. The adolescent period is the time this is happening. And this is a disorder that is most common only only in the adolescent period. Be clear with that. And when adolescent age is combined with the coxavara and high BMI, there is a very high chance of getting the slipped capital femoral epiphysis. And to be noted, the incident is more common in adolescent boys compared to girls. And what are the clinical features? How the patient would come to you if you have if they have the slipped capital femoral epiphysis? The patient would have hip, hip pain. There will be some time there may be medial type pain. Okay, and knee pain can be seen because all these are a closed chain and acute onset of limping so this happens suddenly and the patient is not able to walk so there is an acute onset of limping and limping means walking with um, pain and uh, decreased range of motion which is self-explanatory because once femur is affected head of the femur is affected the range of motion in the hip can be also affected um, the etiology it is due to increased force applied across the epiphysis and you know that when there is coxavara, the bending moment of the bone increases. As I told in the last figure, last class, those who need a clarity can refer back to the last class, which is available in my channel itself. And this bending moment and increase in the bending moment puts a lot of pressure in the femoral head. And especially if you see in coxavara, it is more into the head. It is more angled to the head and that can provide the necessary force that can provide or that can make this it's a CFC cap -in. okay? And obesity is a risk factor. Just see the diagnosis is made by x-ray and you can see the figure. See, the growth plate is shown, head of the femur is shown, femur is shown. And at the growth plate, it's a CFC happens. This is also known as slipped upper femoral epiphysis, which is SUFE because the head is located upper part. So when comparison to the femur, it is upper regions displacement. So slipped upper femoral epiphysis. Here I have taken an x-ray for a demonstration. See there a red line indicates the head of the femur displacing downwards at the epiphysis. If it is not visible, just look at the other side, right side, and then you can see it more clearly. So this is what that stands for, slipped capital femur epiphysis. It is a displacement of the femoral head. In simple terms, it is a displacement of the femoral head at the epiphysis in the posterior direction. Okay.
next condition is acetabular dysplasia okay acetabular dysplasia is a disorder that occur when acetabulum is shallow and does not provide sufficient coverage for the femoral head causing instability of the hip joint this is another condition where the problem is with acetabulum not with the femoral head the acetabulum is shallow that is it is small okay and that's and since it is small it does not cover the femoral head sufficiently that causes the dysplasia or instability at the hip joint that is known as acetabular dysplasia the word is self explanatory dysplasia occurred because of the changes in the acetabulum the acetabulum is shallow okay and the incident this is also a childhood disorder and it can occur in children who have developmental disorder of the hip which is another very big, large condition and common condition developmental disorder of the hip which currently we won't be discussing which currently we won't be discussing then this occur in children where there is a family history of osteoarthritis osteoporosis etc and in child childhood hip conditions like infection trauma leg calves birth disease etc need not worry about it just remember that this can occur in association with other disorders especially like developmental disorder of the hip hip osteoarthritis etc and residual acetabular dysplasia that means the dysplasia can occur as a result of treatment after developmental disorder the treat the child is had child had developmental disorder and he had undergone the treatment but uh, the treatment uh, technique was not correct or after the treatment and the dysplasia of the acetabulum occur that is known as residual acetabular hip dysplasia clear and about the complications uh, it can result in articular damage of course you know that the articular the cartilage is seen in the head of the femur and it lines on so also the acetabulum so when it is shallow this friction between the femur and the acetabulum can increase and it result in articular damage and labral tear is another reason and hip arthritis is the other clinical scenario or complication that can arise knowledge the clinical feature is same like the other condition like anterior hip pain the one of the clinical feature is that this pain worsens in high activity mostly what happens in acetabular dysplasia is acetabular dysplasia might have been developed early in the childhood but it is not uh, clinically manifested so the person may walk and person may live without any problems for years but when they move into high activities and uh, type of high hip flexion extreme hip flexion and hyper extension of the hip etc this uh, features can develop and pain can develop and the diagnosis is x-ray mri range of motion measurement because range of motion would be affected weakness of the hip muscles would be definite and gait the person would have no normal gait so that's another problem and positive anterior apprehension tests and positive anterior impeachment tests need not worry because um, it is beyond the scope of your knowledge at the current point of time just remember x-ray mri range of motion and muscle weakness and the treatment is periacetabular osteotomy which is um, reshaping of the acetabulum pao which is reshaping of the acetabulum not um, as i have seen uh, given in a note uh, which i have already already ex uh, explained like uh, it may be asymptomatic and mild and may produce symptom later in the decade just see the diagram see the acetabulum is shallow the head of femur is moving out large portion of the head of femur is outside the cavity that can provide hip joint instability so acetabular displays problem is with acetabulum it is a shallow and head cannot come in contact with the acetabulum completely that is the reason it is also a childhood disorder and most commonly associated with the developmental disorder of the hip and other hip osteoarthritic conditions etc clear and uh, fine next condition acetabular protrusio or acetabular protrusion okay um, it is acetabular protrusio or acetabular protrusion is an intra pelvic displacement of the acetabulum here the problem is on the acetabulum intra pelvic displacement of the acetabulum and femoral head so that the head projects medially to the ischioiliac line just see that this is known as the ischioiliac line ischium to ilium connecting that line is known as ischioiliac line or cohelus line okay so there is a line like that um, which is uh, used for clinical references ischioiliac line what happens is that uh, there is the displacement of acetabulum and the femoral head there is a displacement of acetabulum and femoral head medially that is into the body into the medial compartment of the medial part of the body so that uh, it lies into the joint cavity see the diagram in the x-ray the head is displaced into the joint cavity that is the 
condition known as acetabular protrusion. The changes is that the pelvic displacement of the intrapelvic displacement of acetabulum as well as the head of the femur occur. And just see the diagram. Um, we need not study acetabular protrusion or uh, coxa profunda, the next condition in detail because as far as our textbook is concerned, as far as the text uh, syllabus of biomechanics first year um, is considered, you don't need to go into the deep. And I tell you that there are a lot of conditions in hip biomechanics uh, which if any other um, subscribers are viewing, you can ask me personally and I can definitely take a class on other conditions in detail. But currently, as it is considered for my students, uh, we won't be discussing it in much detail. Just want to know what is a stabula protrusio. Okay. Then is coxa profunda. Coxa profunda refers to deep acetabular socket. On pelvic x-ray, it is seen as the acetabular fossa being medial to ischia pubial line. It is to be noted that Protrusio of the is where the femoral head is seen additionally medial to the ischial line. See, how do you differentiate between coxa profunda and protrusio acetabulum? Both are problems of acetabular fossa, but in acetabular protrusio, the medial head of the femur, the head of the femur itself comes along with the acetabulum into the medial cavity. But here, what happens is that uh, the acetabular fossa can only show the difference. The acetabular fossa would lie medial to the ischial line. Usually, it is not medial to the ischial line. The acetabular fossa would lie medial to the ischial line. See the changes you see here. This condition you can see the head. And this diagram clearly illustrates the difference between acetabular protrusio and coxa profunda. Acetabular protrusio head and acetabulum changes occur. Here only the changes occur in the acetabulum. Acetabulum is the thing that is going for having changes. And both these conditions result in mechanical restriction of range of motion. See, as I told you, in biomechanically, you need to relate it. And biomechanically, what this condition is? Clinically, this condition may be producing a lot of problems, but we are not worried about that. We need to do about the biomechanics. Yeah. So, what is happening when the femoral head is covered a lot or acetabulum is short? What happens? The range of motion in the hip is restricted. Hip flexion, extension, abduction, etc. all are restricted. And further, there can be an impingement between the femoral head and neck. So you know that the size of the cavity decrease. So the femur head cannot change. Femur head is having the normal size. So it can get compressed into the cavity that can result in femoroacetabular impingement. Okay. So always get in your mind. We just want to know what is the condition. Coxa profunda and acetabular protrusion. One is head plus acetabulum moves medially. We have the head moves. Head does not move. Only the acetabulum shows medial movement to the ischioiliac line known as cohelous line. Yes which I would like to introduce is the abnormalities in acetabular positioning. As I told you, if you had remembered my first class, acetabulum has an angulation. Acetabulum is anteriorly, uh, anteriorly oriented, 20 degree, that is 20 degree anteriorly and inferiorly oriented, 50 degree. When there is a change in this anterior orientation of the acetabulum, the condition anteversion, which is first one shown here, occur. Here acetabulum is positioned anteriorly than normal in the transverse plane that is normally the antiversion is 20 degree so in persons who have acetabular antiversion the degree of antiversion is greater than 20 degree and what happens if it is greater than 20 degree the acetabulum will come forward come and medial to the body or come forward to the body so femur head cannot completely get in attachment with it or the articular surface will be largely ex exposed. When articular surface is exposed, it can lead to instability. So acetabulum has a normal orientation of 20 degree antiversion and 50 degree in inferiorly oriented. What happens in antiversion is acetabulum is positioned anteriorly than normally. The degree of antiversion is greater than 20 degree and result in hip instability. Whereas in retroversion, acetabulum is positioned posteriorly in what happens is that this 20 degree will reduce and the acetabulum would be positioned posteriorly. When acetabulum is positioned posteriorly, it is moving a bit lateral. You can imagine so. What happens is that there is more chance for the head of the femur to come in contact with the acetabulum. Hence, there can be more contact. But more contact is also a problem. It can lead to over coverage and over coverage can result in impingement because everything has to be balanced in the body and when that balance moves or goes, 
or destroy, dist get distracted, it can result in impingement or other problems. So abnormalities in acetabular position means acetabulum has a normal orientation of 20 degree antiversion, inferior orientation 50 degree. When that antiversion is increased, it results in antiversion of acetabulum, which can lead to instability. When that antiversion is decreased, either acetabulum is positioned posteriorly, it can result in retroversion of the acetabulum, which leads to over coverage, and that also lead to a problem known as impingement of the head and neck and acetabulum, head neck with the acetabulum, okay. I want to show you the diagram of acetabular antiversion, just imagine this is the acetabulum, we are moving, looking from our top region, superior view, just see that acetabulum, this is the normal, anti normal orientation, it is 20 degree, okay. When this uh, 20 degree increase, the acetabulum moves this part, okay, acetabulum moves to the left side, right hand side, the medial side of the body, the uh, direction is shown here, the acetabulum is moving, move medial side, only the acetabulum moves, head of the femur does not move. So, imagine that after a certain time, acetabulum reaches this position, or I like means a 2 centimeter from, 1 centimeter from the normal position. So, what will become the angle, it can become like 40 degree or 35 degree. So, that much part of the head of the femur will be exposed. So that can result in acetabular antiversion. And in retroversion, what happens? Acetabulum moves to the lateral side. So acetabulum is the only thing that is moving. Head of the femur is not moving. So here uh, you call it as, uh, uh, this is dotted red line shows the normal, uh, sorry, the zero degree, and it crosses the zero degree and reaches uh, lateral part. What happens is that uh, a large portion of the head of the femur is getting covered, and that results in retroversion. But retroversion can result in impingement. So let us summarize my dear students, uh, my dear friends. Our first condition is slipped capital femur in epiphysis. Second condition is acetabular dysplasia. Then coxa profunda, acetabular protrusio, acetabular antiversion, acetabular retroversion. All these conditions are related to the acetabulum and uh, I promise you, and I want to make sure that there are a lot of clinical conditions which may, may not be discussing with part of this current scenario, uh, current uh, textbook um, or our syllabus. But if you are interested, we will definitely have a video on all the clinical conditions in future. Thank you so much. Stay tuned. And next class, we will be discussing about the hip joint ligaments, which is one of the most common and difficult thing to study. Thank you. So much.